and we live good evening everyone hello and welcome it's time for another exciting episode of it korea and australia channel and the topic today's discussion is live tech resume reviews and feedback so basically today we are offering complimentary live resume reviews and feedback session so thank you everyone who has sent us their resume in advance um so if you're watching us live uh, we um still feel free to send us some resumes for next time uh and i guess while you're watching it live you will understand how valuable the feedback could be so i'll try to maybe run more of those sessions but um you can still even if your resume hasn't been picked for today's reviews you can still learn a lot and ask a lot of questions um so obviously thank you so much for finding some time joining me this evening Please don't forget to introduce yourselves in the comments. Let us know what you do uh, and join our conversations with your comment and questions. So, and at least, at least say hi in the comments so we know that you're here. Uh, if you forgot, I'm Jana Martins um, and I'm passionate about learning more about present and future of tech industry in Australia and sharing it with you on this channel. So again, tonight's topic is live tech resume reviews and feedback. Please stay on the topic and ask questions on the topic. And before I pass it over to um, Ben, our speaker and reviewer today, I just wanted to remind you quickly that we're streaming live on LinkedIn and YouTube. If you miss a stream, no worries. You can watch the replay by subscribing to my YouTube channel, IT Career in Australia. I go live every, every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m., Melbourne time with various experts from my network and be talking about broad range of topics regarding IT industry in Australia. Um, and I also have a meetup group. Yes, so uh, please join us, join uh, my meetup group as well. Um, I post some face-to-face -face events in Melbourne there as well. And obviously subscribe to my YouTube channel. So um, without any uh, further delays, um, some people saying, hi, great to see you. Um, Rara's here, Moshmi here. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, also, guys, you can always use this stream as your opportunity to network people within the industry. So please make sure, obviously, to say hi. And without further delays, over to Ben, please. Oh, thanks, Jana, and um, thanks for having me along to talk to your audience today. I'm excited about um, diving into some resumes with you, and it's great to see we've got a whole bunch of different ones lined up for the session today. Um, so a little bit about me, just to introduce myself. My name's Ben. Um, I'm a IT career coach and CV writer. Uh, for the last eight years, I've been managing uh, the business cvwriters.com.au, uh, formerly IT CV writers. So we specialize in working with people in the IT industry um in developing cvs linkedin profile uh career coaching as well um so we help people change careers get promotions um we help a lot of people getting their first roles in australia um graduating um in you know lots of different situations um, my background before doing this role was actually 20 years in in tech uh, i worked for a, a new zealand-based software startup for seven years um, and that specialization landed me a role in Telstra, where I worked for 11 years uh, in um, product development and engineering space. Um, so I sort of bring to this role a background of as, as a hiring manager um, and have interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people in a variety of different roles. Um, and working with, in this business, um, I worked hand in hand with the founder whose background is in IT recruitment. Um, so that's the sort of expertise that we bring to the table in our, our business is that IT, you know, recruitment, hiring manager view of your resume. Um, yeah, and and um, looking forward to the session today. So thanks, Jana. Perfect, Ben. And I like, you know, that combination because recruiters often look at the resume a bit different as hiring managers. So it is, you know, we can always be a little bit subjective um, about resumes, of course, about a lot of things we subjective in life, but resumes as well. Uh, and it's always have um, good to have like these diverse views from you know technical person and from the business person from recruitment from recruitment. So it's definitely definitely give that holistic approach. Um, we have few people saying hi, and Jot is here. Thank you guys for saying hi. Mariam is here. 
Um, great to see, great to see you here. Um, so uh, we're gonna uh, dive in straight into it. Without you know, we have a lot of um, things to talk about. We actually have um, seven resumes today, and hopefully we'll have time to go through all, through all of them. We'll start with the resumes that um, people um, send us earlier, and also share the jobs um, um, position description and applying for. They will start with those ones, and um, hopefully we'll have a chance to go through through all seven today. Uh, but don't get discouraged if by any chance we didn't have pay attention to your resume. We can always take it offline uh, and also can organize another session. So, so Malika is here, June is here, Shif is here. Thank you so much, guys, for saying hi and, and joining us. So, okay, let's dive into it. Um, and guys, yes, I did. we did change the names or took the personal information from the resumes um, for privacy purposes. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's not the real names. So just don't, don't need to search for them on LinkedIn, please. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's start with this first, um, first resume. And I think, Ben, um, we kind of, I guess, Pre agree that I can give a quick, you know, <laughs> quick first impression comment, and then you can dive in and talk more about the. Um, yeah, absolutely. Sounds like detail. a good plan. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So what do you get? We get the same 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 Smith here. Look, I, I don't know if like if I'm just opening that um, resume randomly and then someone applying. I actually, uh, I actually like it. I like. I really like colors really easy to read um feels like you know i can see i can understand uh what's position person applying for i can see the details so i think it's um just from the first impression view it's it reads really well so over to you ben yeah look first impressions really matter yana and um you know research shows that people make an impression of you as a candidate within five seconds um, and I would say within five seconds of reading your CV, but let's be honest, it's not really reading, it's skimming the page, it's skimming the document. And um, one of the first things that you look for is, um, especially if you've got 50 of these documents to go through, right, is this person a match, yes or no, right? So we want to see that confirmation immediately. And how do we get that confirmation? It's job title, right? If I'm recruiting for a data engineer who has skills with Python, SQL, et cetera, um, I've got confirmation immediately by just looking, glancing at the top of the CV. So I'm seeing data engineer. Um, I've got Python, Tableau, SQL. I've got some, you know, ticking some boxes for me. Um, I think what's missing is I would like to see um, citizenship status or PR, you know, visa status. That is kind of important um, to have that in the top right in the in the personal details there. Um, I don't really like experienced data engineer. I'd like to have some more facts there, you know, number of years of experience. So data engineer with eight years of experience. Um, we've got some good keyword alignment there on the tools and technology in terms of, you know, the, the technologies that I'd be shortlisting someone on, like, you know, do they have Power BI? Have they used um, Tableau before, for example? So it's ticking a lot of boxes there. Um, I really, I'm a firm believer that um, your CV, the top half of page one, has to have a very high impact. So straight away when we open this, I think there's a lot to like there with that keyword optimization, the job title matches, um, but maybe some more facts in that data engineer profile. And I know the CV because I had looked at it before. There's actually some great, like um, Sam's worked for Westpac before, you know, so that fact, I want to find that fact straight away is like one of the first impressions, you know, great company to have worked for, down as a large company too, right? So those are the things that are actually, um, I think for this profile, like a big tick in the box and it's getting my interest to dive a bit deeper. And uh, we have actually a position, the position example that Sam is applying for, just to give a bit of idea as well, yeah? Yeah. Data engineer position. And, um, I don't know, do we have those keywords here straight away? Yeah, so straight up looking at things here like Hadoop, um, Teradata, Spark, Hive, you know, some of those keywords that I think are not appearing on that profile would maybe be a negative. Um, if I'm shortlisting people um, 
you know, I, I may be, you know, especially if you've got a, um, you know, the market's quite tough at the moment. If you've got a whole lot of people and you're shortlisting people on, you know, they've got to hit the ground running with experience with, um, you know, Kafka or whatever it is. Um, if I don't see those words straight away, I'm not necessarily going to hunt through your CV to find whether you've got that or not. And I'm not going to give you a call to ask you that question. I'm just going to go next, you know. So you've really got to got to make sure you've got to drill into the selection criteria, which Yana's got on the screen there. So some of the words that stand out, big data, data warehouse, um, you know, Hadoop, Spark, et cetera. So I don't remember seeing those words back on that Sam's profile. Um, in there, oh, well, there's, okay, there's Kafka on the left-hand side there in Spark. They could be more prominent. So I am a big fan of using a headline at the top. I like the fact that Sam's got data engineer here. I would suggest, and this is the style that I deploy in our profiles, under that data engineer job title, having some key words. As, as, big, as, that, as big as that text that Jan has highlighted there. So it, it's Kafka, Kafka, Spark, DevOps, um, maybe the industry sector, maybe it's financial services. This is a job with, um, uh, sorry, it's Commonwealth, isn't it? Um, so, you know, having worked in Westpac before, massive tick, right? So, um, yeah, I think, although it's good, I think it could be optimized better for this role. And guys, probably, you know, first key takeaway for all of you watching, you've got to customize your CV for the role. Um, especially in this, this job market. So you really need to spend a little bit of time looking at the selection criteria of the role, looking at the words that they've mentioned in the particular um, hard skills, technical skills, and maybe some of the soft skills as well, and making sure those words are present and highly visible in the first half of page one of your CV. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are always saying like, oh my God, like I can't, like I can't just customize my resume for each one. It just takes a lot of time and things like that. But I think it's that quality over quantity. Like if you know what sort of positions you're looking for, if you really want those positions, uh, I think you're spot on in terms of like putting these keywords is really right here because um, especially now that, uh, as you mentioned, market is a bit of a uh, reverse and there's a lot of candidates applying for the role. From the recruitment perspective, recruiter just going to click, 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 click. And if you, those... Those main things is um, clear, written down in your in your first page, where is a high chance to get shortlisted and at least get this call. And I think it's also important to remember that um, first, usually, is not highly technical person who's going to look at your resume uh, by the time it get to the uh, get to the hiring manager. So if there is some sort of similar technology that call different names, um, I don't know, like it could be um javascript but you but it's next i don't know um i keep forgetting already no js for example and um maybe the person doesn't know that it's the same things yeah when you're looking for no js and you don't know it's javascript so just don't assume that whoever's reading your resume know all the technology and all interchangeable <laughs> frameworks yeah, exactly right, Yano. So you've got to, got to, you've got to cater to different audiences, right? And cater to that non-technical or semi-technical HR business partner that's probably working on the initial filtering of hundreds of applications. I mean, it's Commonwealth Bank, right? So you know, there's going to be hundreds of applications for this. Um, can you see how many there are? It'd be interesting. Um, Not you know, crazy at the moment, but it's already like you know, oh, forty-three. Yeah, okay. Not many at all. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, so there's going to be yeah potentially a non-technical person who's scanning who doesn't necessarily know the difference between you know um, different terminology that you might might use. Um, so just try to match the language of the job ad. And look, tailoring a CV doesn't have to take that long. It's really just making sure. For example, you know, big data is. I mean, it's in the job title. So I you'd be um, a good customization for this is just put the words big data in the first, you know, big letters at the top of the, I know it seems obvious, um, but that will, yeah, I put it right there where that word profile is, is data engineer slash big data engineer. You can put multiple job titles in your CV. Um, but it, it, it's a really good little trick is to have a little headline or sub headline, if you like. So I, I really like this approach here, that job title at the top, second line, keywords. And that just really connects with people straight away. Yeah, yeah.
Makes sense. Um, anything else important you want to um, mention in Sam's resume before we move to um, to others? Obviously, because we want to try to get the feedback to seven people today. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, super quick. Um, I think there's some projects on the second page that I feel like could actually be highlights. You know, so um, if I'm now putting myself in the shoes of the hiring manager, well, I want to see what this guy's been working on. What has he recently delivered? What are the project? What's the impact he's had in the last role? You know, so having those little short, I would say a one line bullet point or a two line bullet point that's underneath that summary up the top is give me a couple of highlights that really grab my attention, you know, and that should be ideally around some of the keywords like big data, you know, lead engineer on a big data implementation for downer, um, you know, a couple of details. But, well, that's all you need, right? And you can have the further information later down in, in your um, in the document, but just those little snippets. Um, so those, some sometimes people bury these little details down on page two or page three or page four that really should just be like a little teaser up the top that goes, okay, this guy looks like a match. You know, he's led a big project. He's implemented Kafka or, you know, um, trying to touch on those keywords like big data, data warehouse, some of the tech that they've mentioned and some highlights. Perfect, yes. Um, Navjot has some comment. Um, the objective could be short, in my opinion. The tools and tech is a good way to showcasing skills, but a clean table is on the eyes, maybe. What do you think about tables, uh, Ben? Do you recommend put like tools and t like um, technical skills in the table? I do, yeah. Awesome question, Navjot. Um, I use a table. And look, ATS um, software has a hard time parsing the data out of the table. Mm -hmm. But hiring managers love it because if you and, and this something I don't like cosmetically about the way that tools and technology those columns are laid out it doesn't quite sit nicely with me I'm a bit fussy but yeah having that in a table I think would be more presentable and hiring managers really love that what you can also do is for things like um, you can have Python you can have number of years and maybe give yourself a star rating and that's what we do in all of our our profiles as well so people can get a, at a glance and go okay well this guy's got 15 years of experience using sql and c plus plus and they get a sort of they can assess you at a glance um it, but yeah the, the most advice is that stay away from tables for for um because of ats systems but i think for the purpose of making an impression with the hiring manager or a tech recruiter they they work really well to summarize tools and technology so yeah i would use them yeah. Um, Rose has a comment. Um, so, Rose, if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, um, but I hope I hope it's close, <laughs> close enough. I'm disappointed that hiring personnel are not aware of what they need to look for. Um, I think it's uh, the business interest to know what to look for in order to find someone that is good instead of looking for a beautiful resume that might not mean experience. I think, Rez, the, the thing is, when you get 100 resumes, uh, and someone need to filter it. You can't put the hiring manager with the extensive um, technical experience to uh, filter those resumes. You need someone who can quickly filter by the keywords. And it's not about the beautiful resume itself. It's about matching those keywords because it's basically that time-consuming um, exercise to quick, quickly, quickly shortlist people who has the has the minimal uh, minimal skills minimal requirement skills I've, I've seen some interesting heat map analysis Yana of um, resume um, how people read resumes and it's it, it's not really any surprise but there's an F pattern across, along the page so basically you've got to have these keywords in the right place to to grab people's attention in that scan that they're doing and they they go down and you know across but they're just scanning for those keywords then look i um and and i appreciate the feedback you know you've got to have the substance to back it up you're not just going to win a job because you put the word you know big data on your resume um you've got to have something to back it up but it's all about just grabbing their attention in the first few seconds to really get them invested in reading your profile yeah it's like it's it's a basically it's marketing yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your resume, it's that like the marketing brochure that's basically just need to be there to grab people's attention. And then, you know, when you get to interview, it's, it's a completely different story. But um, 
yeah, I guess the, the reason we go for all customizing that um, uh, we need to we need to make sure we shortlist it. Uh, and I'm pronouncing them correctly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad. Um, uh, Watch me just double checking. Untables impossible through ATS. So. The, yeah, I mean, look, um, I mean, uh, there's ATS, there's lots of different vendors of ATS software solutions. And um, from what I um, understand, you know, the, uh, most ATS will parse the text from a table. Um, they just won't necessarily interpret it in the right context. So, for example, if you've got um, employer, job title, dates, um, you don't want to put that in a table because that's critical information to understand that, okay, I work from Westpac from 2019 to 2022. That's really critical, right? Whereas if you've just got a list of tech, like we're seeing on the screen here, it's not critical that that's understood in, in context. Um, yeah, so... Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, but... Yeah, I hope that explains it. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Don't don't just put the you know the experience in the table. Just try to avoid it just in case. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Okay, maybe let's jump to our next um, resume so that um, we can give some different examples. Um, so here's Mary Smith here. Um, I mean, if I would receive this um, resume, I think that's the first thing that I would see like. What's Mary's do? Like, where is her title? Uh, and we can get to her title here, uh, but I just want it right here so that if I'm looking for <laughs> looking for BA, I can see it straight away. I'm looking for BA. That's that's a <laughs> title right here. Um, so Ben, over to you. <laughs> Yeah, look, I'm a big fan of white space, but um, I think maybe there's a bit too much deployed into this document. Um, I think documents have to be, your CV needs to be visually appealing. And um, I, I like the use of white space here and the, um, the, the cleanness of the, of the um, headings, um, but probably a bit too much space at the top. It, it's missing, um, you, you've really got to have your citizenship or you know, if you're an Australian citizen or PR or working rights, that's got to be there. I mean, that's, um, again, a like, um, yeah, I, I just um, location as well is another important thing. So keep in mind, too, that um, when you apply for roles, your metadata is going into someone's database, it's going to a recruiter's database, and you're getting stored in a particular location. So you need to have a location there. Some some recruit some ATS software will even default to the capital of Australia, which is Canberra, right? So it might throw you in that bucket there. So you've got to have location. Just put Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, you know, major city, um, and put that uh, citizenship um, detail. Um, what I don't like, I don't like career objectives really. Um, it's not really about what's in it for you. It's about what's in it for the employer. So I want to know why I would employ you, not kind of what your objective is. Um, and I'm not what seeing a fact. Put? So, I put Sam didn't put really the how it's called. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> mind, it's about how you fit the role. So it's about how you your credentials for a senior BA role. So experienced, extensive experience. Um, you know, uh, there's not a lot of facts there. You know, and when you look at this profile. Um, there's some great experience there if you look further down at the client, you know. Um, so I want the first sentence of this document to be senior BA with 12 years of experience working for clients such as NAB, um, dot, 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 um, on um, yeah, NAB, Australian Unity and Telstra um, with, uh, with experience on projects including um, PEGA, BPMN, um, automation, Blah blah blah. So I'm not seeing a lot of facts in that introduction. Um, yeah, and there's yeah, you know there's some great names in here. There's a great body of work here um, that should be you know mentioning IBM, Vodafone, um, Telstra, NAB. Um, should and I think really in general it's hard to see the name of the company. You know, what I mean, like I need to kind of a bit look what the company was. Where like I need to read NAB really clearly straight away. So it's it's there. It's a big name. It's need to be really quickly readable. It's a massive, yeah, exactly. It's it's a it's a really important detail that makes you highly valuable for um, roles in top four banks. And you know, um, and I think it, it, I think there was a role um, with the CV. Is that right, Yana? Yes, yes. So we have a senior business analyst role here. Yes. 
Yeah, so if we have a look at the requirements of selection criteria for this role, um, the skills we're looking for are, so some of the keywords there we've got, um, there's not a lot here, I have to say, but safe is one of them. Um, it mentions qualification certs, it mentions BPMN and Scrum. So the, the keywords that you might insert in that first couple of sentences here are definitely agile, safe, you know, so senior BA with 12 years of experience working for working for clients such as NAB, Telstra, um, IBM on um, large scale programs with up to 50 team members, including safe, agile and scrum environments. And you might mention a cert if you've got CBAP or, you know, other certifications, you'd mention that in the first sentence as well. Yeah, first and sentence. It's, look, it's even saying like, um, um but we're looking for someone being based locally. So back to your point, like um, yeah. in terms of the, yeah, like, is that the resume coming from business, Sydney or Melbourne or happy to relocate or? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can see there's a lot to work with in that profile. There's a lot of highlights. Um, again, I'd probably go back to um, having that key achievement highlights over in the, you know, under that, career objective section there is having a few bullet points. And, um, you know, in a project delivery role, you want, to, you want to tell me the last three projects you worked on, you know, and that gives you an awesome opportunity to name drop, right? You've got NAB, Telstra, Australian Unity. You can drop in some words like safe and you could drop in um, size of the team, onshore, offshore team, you know, the budget of the project, how long it was, what, what was the type of project. Um, so those look really good as little one line or two line little bullet points that really grab my attention. You go, oh, wow, okay, this person looks like a match. And then I will go, I'm engaged and I will go and read the detail that follows in the document. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. We have a quick um, question from Navjot. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but numb at least um, for experience, a bit intimidating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, I, I use another table, so I'm guilty of using tables. <laughs> um, I use a table under the career objective. Um, I have a table of deployment history, as well as having that, you know, in the in the body of the document. But what that does is it gives at a glance. Now you see how effective it would be for Mary's profile here to see at a glance, um, and you can have, yeah. you know, Mahindra brackets, you know. Telstra Australian Unity. So you can have the client names and your employer name if you're working for a big contracting, um, you know, contracting firm, um, consulting firm. So having that little table here would work really well for this profile because um, you know, Mary's got experience in some of these, you know, tier one companies, basically. Um, yep. Yep, definitely. Um, ben, anything else you want to really add um, regarding Mary's profile before we move to the next? Um, let, yeah, if you go down a bit further, look, uh, yeah, I think some of those certifications are probably hidden a bit too that should be up the top or mentioned in that first paragraph too. If you do have like PMP, um, ITIL certifications, Agile, yeah, they're probably worth mentioning in those first couple of sentences. Um, people do care about that. You don't need to go back through your entire work history. Um, it's good they're actually just bullet points there, and that's fine too. Yeah. Actually, you know, this is a good point, Yana. So the only reason I would go back more than 10 years in someone's CV is if there was a good reason to. And we're actually seeing one here, which is, you know, working for Vodafone for five years. So that's actually like quite a, um, a strength that for this person's profile is, hey, combine that with um, Telstra experience, you know, you might be looking at someone who's got seven or eight years working for telcos, right? And that's a huge tick in the box for someone looking for a BA with that experience. So, yeah. yeah, that's probably a reason why you might go back more than 10 years is just to have that little detail in there with Vodafone next to it. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, so, and we do have a few more resumes for more, um, for the different positions as well. So, um, sorry guys, it looks like a little bit messy here. Just I had to remove the personal details, but uh, it does look, you know, imagine that's a phone and the email here and the profile for Nila. 
Um, so again, for me, if I'm uh, landing on this resume, I get again, same, <laughs> same thing. Uh, what is Nila doing? Like I, I can see some, you know, React JS, but like for me, if I'm quickly scrolling through resumes, I want to see here uh, front end developer or web developer or something that just gives me that first, uh, first impression straight away. Yeah, exactly right. It's a little bit difficult to work out, and you know, one of the one of the um, the most important things in terms of keyword optimization for your CV. Sorry if I already mentioned this, but it's worth repeating. Is job title, you know, and I don't see a match for a job title there that this person would be applying for. Web application developer is not there. Web app developer is there. Front end development is there, but you know, I'm not. So this would actually fail to be opt to be ranked highly in an ATS solution, right? Because it doesn't, doesn't contain the job title that I'd be recruiting for. So I'd be assuming, I'd, you know, this person would be applying for a front-end developer role, web application developer, um, and that's not in there. It needs to be. Um, so, yeah, and you, you do have the job title further down, which is good. Um, so front-end developer. Um, now, you can have multiple job titles in your CV. So I would be, in this instance, putting front-end developer brackets, web application developer, and then we've optimized that a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a couple of fundamentals here, right? Um, one, um, no, no working rights details. I think it's mentioned here. Oh, so, sorry, but it yes. was really hard to find. You know what I mean? That's not the first thing I realized because I'm like, oh, Again, like I look at this, I saw in Nepal, but is this person here? Is this person in Australia? And then only I saw the full working rights uh, yeah. here. So, and I think that's information, again, need to be right there because someone who really quickly scrolling, scroll here, see Nepal here, and that's it. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, it's external application next. Yeah. And, and um, I think you need to, this is another... You know, it, you know, recruitment's a risk management exercise, right? And you want you you have to address risks. You have to address career gaps. You have to address things like if you've moved to Australia and you're seeking your first role in Australia, um, you have to state that. Um, you, you can't just sort of hope that people interpret your situation or understand everything about you. They're not you're not necessarily going to invest that much time in trying to learn. So you've got to lean into it. So um, I would be expecting to see a sentence there, you know, permanently relocated to Australia um, with my family, you know, seeking full-time opportunity, seeking um, entry-level roles with great employers offering career development or something like that. So, you know, that message, I've, I'm in Australia, I've permanently settled, maybe if you've got your family with you, um, you know, and that, the statement about the working rights there is good. It's good to have that in there. Maybe a bit complicated. I just say full Australian working rights, leave it at that, um, and then be ready to explain your situation um, should Later. you be asked. Yeah. 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 I actually quite that's, like that's, that's can get, like, That can create more confusion. So there's too many details that maybe doesn't yeah. need to be there right now. Yeah. Uh, but I actually uh, quite like the summary of those bullet points there. I think um, if you kind of join those together, they're fact-based. You've got four years of experience as a developer, specializing in front-end development, including React JS, React Native, et cetera. Great. That, that's really good. I, it's just missing the right job titles in there, I think. Um, yep. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Anything else we want to mention here? Again, project achievements. So to stand out, it's pretty tough to get a job um, with not much experience, you know. And I think having your, um, particularly being like a front end developer, you know, if you can if you can have links through to sites you've developed, um, they should feature highly up up the top, right? And I think you've this got is, a, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, exactly. Link. And and you know you want that to be impressive. Anything you're linking to, the link's got to work really well. It's got to be impressive, and have it right up the top so people, because you know, um, people will you know um, they'll want to see evidence of your work if you've got not much you know runs on the board, so to speak. Um, so it's really valuable. Again, like I would have that key achievements or career highlights section, you know, just under the summary at the top. Give me a few points that things that I can. Um, 
spark my interest, you know. And if you're starting out in your career, it might be really top academic results. Um, it could be your personal projects, like it could be a link off to GitHub and some cool stuff you've done just as personal stuff. You know, that's what people need to do to, you know, build your brand and build your credentials as a as a technical expert in your field. Yeah. Oops. We have a quick question from uh, Moshmi. What's the ideal resume page numbers of words? <laughs> Good question. I keep hearing that no more than two pages. <laughs> well, I um, I would say that there's a lot of information that you will hear that's uh, US centric, right? The US uh, job market is um, resume one to two page standard is the uh, um, one to two page resume style is the standard. And so a lot of the information you see online, articles, YouTube videos, stuff on social, you, you'll keep seeing that, oh, one to two page maximum. It's not really the case in Australia. You can go to a longer document. And I think the reason why often people will tell you less is because most CVs are pretty crap. Um, and recruiters don't want to sift through four, five, six, seven pages of your terrible writing to get the answer to their question, right? So they really... Would, would prefer that you have less details. I always come back to um, the top half of page one should have all the details to qualify you for the role. And the rest is extra, more detailed information. They can read it if they want to, but you've answered all their questions, all the relevant information to qualify you for a deeper look, to put you on the long list, if you like. It's really got to be in that top half. So I'm not so fixated on how long the document is, if it's really impactful on the first page. But look, our CVs that I write for people are three to four, three or four pages would be um, the norm. Occasionally, I'd go out to five pages for um, if there's a good reason. And that might be if someone maybe has been in a lot, uh, project manager who's worked from contract to contract and you've got a lot of different projects you might want to showcase. But again, page one has got to sell them for their role, no matter what. Um, you've got other situations too where you might end up with a longer document, um, academic CVs, public sector, you know, um, higher education. So yeah, there are a few, but most most CVs I'd say three to four pages is is a good um, yeah guide. I would say as long as under five, I have no yeah. problem with that. Like I feel like if someone sends me a resume more than five pages, I will be like, whoa. Uh, but as long as under five like i think it's normal and sometimes it's it's only two page resume uh and you have like 20 years experience it kind of like doesn't feel like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have 20 years experience it's like oh it's only two pages here so yeah i don't think you need to really worry about how many pages as long as it's not too many so what we have with uh, marie we have three for example here with sam we have two okay so yeah. you know two three so Neil, obviously, two here. Yes. Yeah, so next one is um, Gumuk. So obviously, again, ignore these black spaces, uh, white spaces, is uh, details here. Um, so this resume looks like um, just the export from the LinkedIn. Um, and I mean, for me, I guess nothing wrong if someone sends me just the export from LinkedIn. But sometimes you probably want to customize things a little bit more. It depends depends how well you, I guess, keeping your keeping your um, LinkedIn um, up to date. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, if you're going for a very specific type of role, um, that um, I mean, look, I've got to be honest. It doesn't create a good impression with me if someone's just going to export from LinkedIn and send. But look, in many situations, it might be perfectly reasonable to do that, right? Like if you're applying for a job internally, uh, you know you're going to get an interview. It's just a formality to provide your CV. Then, yeah, sure, go ahead and do it, you know. Um, if you've got, you know, um, if it's very straightforward and your LinkedIn profile is optimized for, you know, um, front-end software engineer um, with the skill set. Um, I, I think it's, you know, in some situations you could do it, but to me, it just, it, it shows the person hasn't really customized it for my role. 
there's some details missing too. So I don't have um, on this document, I don't have location, I don't have working rights, um, I don't have phone number. Um, I'm, I guess I'm encouraged here to click through onto LinkedIn. I mean, I'll probably through. delete the phone number was here. Oh, I, so that kind of email yes. and the phone number. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, but you know, I, I also think too, it's missing some of the elements that I like, which is like the key achievement bullet points. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the tech skills table. I mean, that information is further down in the document, but um, I, I, when you, uh, you know, skimming, skim reading through the content, it actually looks pretty well put together and I'm seeing a lot of facts there. Um, maybe there's a bit of a story that needs to be told here too. Having a background, not in IT, moving towards an IT role, like what's your situation? Um, and I'm sorry, I just skim read the first intro part, but, you know, Maybe, and you know, um, a lot of the time in CVs, you've got to troubleshoot, you know, a particular situation. So it would depend on the role you're going for. For example, if you're a freelancer and you're just looking for more freelance work and this is your profile, probably looks quite good, right? Um, but if you're applying for a permanent role, um, so could you scroll up, please, Yana? Um, so Job Search Ninja... Yeah, so I don't really have any details about, I don't know that company, um, whether they're in Australia, are they global, is this a gig type, you know, what is that role? Um, so there's some sort of questions there. And possibly yeah. might need something in the summary to just sort of describe, you know, hey, I'm, I'm transitioning from a background into, you know, um, uh, web design work or, or whatever it is, but. Yeah, and uh, de definitely, like as you mentioned before, uh, if you're just uh, exporting your profile from LinkedIn, it's uh, restrict you from like customizing things and actually adding adding things. So I think that that's the main point, um, main point here as well. So that's already because it's uh, uh, exported from LinkedIn, it's already limiting you what you can put there and how. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and I'd like to get the headline because I actually see some really interesting stuff in there. There's like the AWS certs, there's CICD, um, you know, there's there's some AWS services there, um, some some good skills, right? Python. So there's some things that if you if you're able to do that headline, you know, you would grab people's attention who are looking for those specific skill set, right? Um, which you can't really do just with this export. Yeah, and also we see that CICD pipelines in the summary, but I mean, when we're going to the job description in each one, um, it's not really easy to find where where you actually did any CICD pipelines. Yeah. So yeah, and I did. Really... If that was central to your, you know, your DevOps tooling, um, continuous integration stuff was central to why I'm hiring you because you have that skill set. I'd probably want to have a key achievement bullet point, you know, that talks about oh, well, where have you implemented that? What tools did you use? You know, um, so I've got a little bit more detail to go on rather than you just saying, you know, you know how to do it. Yeah. And I think in general, you know, if uh, if someone hiring, uh, especially developer with particular language skills, um, and maybe those skills, maybe I guess that, for example, Next.js is mentioned here, then probably the next thing I would do, I go to each job and I want to know what exactly this person did with Next.js uh, yep. in each of these jobs. Uh, even if it's just like a simple sentence, but just sort of understand what's what's been done with that. Um, and uh, if it's not mentioned anywhere else, but in the summary, then you sort of kind of, questioning it are ah, like is it just here for the keyword or you, did you actually uh, proactively work on it yeah. yeah okay moving forward um keeping you know trying to be on time john we have a john here uh, and i mean my first impression if i get this resume a bit too busy straight away uh, yeah. you know i have a name and about me and technical skills and it's all kind of crammed one page. And it's also coming back, I guess, to that uh, Moshmi question about how many pages is too much. Um, I mean, just trying to get everything in one page, just to it's all on my page, uh, not a great strategy. So <laughs> I want to be able to, to read it and don't be just bombarded with so many, so many words. And I'm like, oh my God, where do I look uh, from here? <laughs> yeah, and look, um... 
when I read that about me statement, um, and John, John Doe, if you're out there listening, I'm happy to give you some, you know, one-on-one -on -one support to give you a few more tips and constructive advice. But when I read that about me, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's like a bit of a chat GPT statement there. There's just self-starter, problem solver, passionate, collaborative. Um, those things might be true, right? But you need to have some substance behind, you know, so even if you've just got nine months of experience um, as in front end development on two websites, you know, that's much better than using these broad, non-specific terms and these adjectives like, um, and again, that kind of, I seek a position, you know, like it's not really about what's in it for you, it's, in, it's about what's in it for me. How do you fit into my organization as maybe a front end developer, a web developer, and again, I don't have that job title here either. So, you know, I would assume because I'm looking at the tech and so on that that's front end developer is, is the role you'd be going for, right? Um, I, I want that about me. I'm a front end developer with two years of experience using, um, including Node.js, Express, RESTful APIs, dot, 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 um, having, wor having worked on four website development projects, including Link, you know, to the best one. Um, I think this may be something, yeah. So there's something to something else here too um, that maybe requires a little bit of explanation. If you've been working outside of your field, you know, and you're looking, maybe you've been doing personal projects and freelancing, and you're looking to break into, you know, uh, pure full time IT focus, you kind of need to address that in the about me section. You know, don't kind of, again, it's that risk management thing. If I go, well, okay. I don't really know what these website things are. This person hasn't worked as a full-time developer. I've got another 25 resumes to look at. Um, what's going to make me more interested, you know? So you kind of, you have to address gaps. Um, you have to address risks. It's just the nature of it. Um, American spelling too, I just spotted. And I've got a bit of an eye for that. But I, it, <laughs> you've got to adjust your spelling to English UK or English Australia, same thing. Um, yeah, most people wouldn't notice, but I do. Yeah, it's always a bit tricky when you don't have exact experience. Uh, but you can, again, you can explain it. And uh, I think the also um, explain maybe your connection into industry. Sometimes when you're coming from particular backgrounds, so if you're coming more from like, for example, hospitality industry, maybe you want to look at the roles in the hospitality industry for that junior development role because you understand the industry really well i don't know go and apply to mr yum <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> or something yeah. well absolutely and that's um it, there's always a way to leverage your expertise in any domain you know to look at that um domain expertise you know to have a two-step approach to get where you want to go um leverage that background talk about your transferable skills talk about your experience in the australian workplace um, if you're coming from overseas it demonstrates a lot of things right that you can cut it in in an australian workplace um, that that's a positive um, but yeah i do think there's a bit lacking here to kind of tell me about what this person's situation is um, and you know and yeah and, and there's some websites mentioned so i'd love to get a link to one of those that i can just click through on and if it's really impressive then Cool, you know, I might give you a shot, you know, um, and um, yeah, I, I feel like supposed to be links, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, those yeah. ones are links, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so cautious about the time, we have uh, not many minutes left and two more resumes. Um, let's jump into it. Um, Maria here, um, so, um, so again. <laughs> The same same first impression. Where is the title? Where is the title? What what job? Where what job you are applying for? But um, again, I actually really subjective. But I do like when it's one color involved. I always find it easy. Like I don't like colorful. Like you know, sometimes people put like resume templates and stuff. But I actually do like when it's just one um, yeah. color that highlight things. For example, blue, like with Maria, or like with Sam, it was a bit of a, like, um, I guess, bluish as well. So just, for me, it definitely helps me to really easy. You don't need to be like a graphic designer or anything to do your resume, but just those simple touches, I think, does make a difference. Yeah, I agree. It just adds a bit of that interest. I actually think um, 
Maria's got this one right. You know, it's a flat document format. There's no tables and columns and things. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think the color adds a bit of interest. All the right personal details are there that I, ne I need to know. You know, con phone number is important to be right there. Um, job title is not optimized, though. I would assume project manager, but the word project manager does not appear early in this document. Um, and that does impact. And this is a big deal for ATS rankings of your of your profile project manager if that is your target job title needs to appear in the document multiple times and early in the document um, so 14 years of experience eight years as a project manager um, that's great I, I really like that first sentence you know apart from the american spelling um, but that that's the sort of sentence i would always re lead into my cvs with um, Project manager with eight years of experience. I would probably add in. So project manager um, with eight years of experience, having led uh, 10 projects worth up to $1.2 million, leading teams of up to 25 people in the financial services uh, SaaS product domain. Uh, 14 years of IT experience includes a background in engineering, dot, 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 dot. Um, so, yeah, I, I like the fact that that first sentence is pretty much the style I would recommend as it's factual. The key thing there is eight years of um, project management experience. You could probably mention, you know, is that agile? Is it Prince2? Do you have some certs? What domain? Um, I don't mind the style actually of highlighting the words like that. Um, so those are coming. This would reflect selection criteria I'd be looking for. ERP transformation, for example. I mean, that, you know, that's an example of a key achievement. Yeah, and actually, no, this is good. You know, why should you hire me? Key achievements, right? So this is the highlight sort of concept that I was talking about that I think works well. You know, um, I you would hire a PM based on their ability to do ERP transformation projects. You know, um, that would be the central reason I would pick up the phone and call you, right? So that's good to see that in the first bullet point. Let me get skills. And then work experience. Yeah, I think there's a lot to like there. Um, the job titles are pretty easy to find, company details. You don't need to go back to 2008, 2009, unless there's a good reason to, right? So unless I want to mention that company, I certainly wouldn't put five or six bullet points under a role that's 15 years old. You know, it's just, it's never going to... Um, it's really never going to be a factor, you know, though, that content there. You're better off using the precious space in your document for some other purpose, right? Yep. And what do we have? We have 2016, yeah. 2018. Uh, and I usually actually like when people put the links to the company so you can actually click to the company website, uh, especially if it's not like NAB or something that... <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Everyone knows, yeah. So you can actually quickly click click to the company yeah, and now, have a look. Now, Jana, I just spotted something there. We've got a big career gap there. So that's definitely something you've got to lean into that. Um, you know, there's a massive one 12 month gap there in this profile, right? Now, perhaps the person hasn't updated their CV. That's fine. But if you've got a career break, lean into it, put the details in there, you know, um, traveling, carer, spending time with family. Um, whatever it is, you've got to address a career break if, the, if there's a big one in there. Generally, anything over like three or four months has to be explained in there. Um, otherwise, it's just leaving me with a big question mark, and I, I don't know why you've been out of the workforce for so long. Yes, yeah. Um, and just questions about the time. Really, really quickly, um, some feedback to Lorem. Lorem, I know you sent the resume just to... Um, just today, so we a bit of a, you know squeezing it in here, but we we'll, can give you a quick um, quick um, feedback. Again, my quick feedback: if I'm receiving the resume, it's too gem for me to read. Uh, the first thing, just want a bit of a spacing. Um, how many pages we got? We got quite a few pages. Okay, so I understand why we uh, squeeze in a bit because we're trying to trying to get into four pages. Um, Ben, over to you. We have like two minutes, <laughs> two minutes of feedback. <laughs> hey, we're super quick. Um, whenever I see seasoned, I think of salt and pepper. I, 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 I want to see facts. Seasoned leader. Um, I want to see, you know, 
um, executive leader with 15 years of experience in these companies, this sector, something like that, fact-based sentence. Um, I don't see a job title. I really don't know where this person fits in my organization or what role is, is being targeted. I see some really good experience there. I think this is a great example of where you know, a little table snapshotting the employers and job titles would be brilliant between just above that experience summary or in, in place of it is actually having job titles and employee names and some dates. So I just see at a snapshot, if you do have 20 years of experience working in telcos and finance sector, drop the names in, you know, Vodafone NZ, great, you know, good name, right? Um, yeah, bit cramped. Um, it's good to have all the tech skills there, but then it's like, who are you? Are you a leader? Then why have I got all these tech skills here if you're an executive, you know, are you an executive leader? Um, so it's reading more like an architect or tech lead with all of that tech skills on page one. So a tech lead. Yeah, we only get to the title kind of here. <laughs> we found it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it looks like some great experience, great, awesome, relevant tech skills there, but it doesn't seem it's optimized for a tech lead role and a you know a, or an architect role. Or, yeah, um, and you do kind of yeah. If you've been a senior developer and tech lead, you kind of you need a consistent theme and target. And I, I think that's um, sorry, way more than two minutes feedback, Jana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So we can always, you know, bring it back or talk about it. So, guys, if you actually go to um, Ben's website, CV Writers, uh, we try to jam a lot of information today as much as we can. Uh, but you also can go to Ben's um, to Ben's uh, website, and you have uh, options here to get a free CV review um, and book the or just book the call as well with uh, Ben. So. Obviously, we like you know running through the <laughs> all the advice really, really quickly today. Uh, if you have more questions, just jump to the Ben's website and you can um, you can find some answers. Uh, I'm just cautious about the time. We literally have three minutes left of our live stream. Oh, uh, actually, uh, sorry, James. I know it's a few questions, but I think you ha we have to take it offline. Um, uh, Sonalika is saying actually about the color. I just said before that I do like just. So the one color in the resume, so I have one blue, like uh, Maria's resume or like Sam, like have a uh, highlighted color. So uh, that's just my personal preference. Here, for example, there is no color. Um, it just sort of like gray highlights. It also helps um, that, yeah, so that's fine as well. Um, yeah, I just like a little bit blue. Yeah, visual appeal. I, I think there's a lot to be said about a visually appealing document. Um, yeah, so as long as you're keeping that flat document format, like the ones we just looked at, I think have that simple, you know, simple formatting, not complicated, and, you know, maybe a simple color, but yeah, um, bottom line is keep it simple and, you know, um, recognize your strengths too, you know, maybe get someone, if you know someone has got a good visual design eye, you know, get a peer review, get some feedback on that. Um, yeah, visual appeal is important. Um Tiger Shag is saying, I love the YouTube names. Um, it's frustrating how subjective this is. I'm sure there are recruiters who would say they love colors in their resumes. And I completely agree it's subjective, yeah. but it would not override, you know, the keywords or years of experience or anything like that. It just if it's like, especially if it's a junior role and you have like a 50 resumes that like all kind of a one year experience and few graduate projects, how do you choose? And the ones that reads the easiest way, um, you know, will will probably get shortlisted. So obviously, if you have like ten years experience, someone have two, but someone put the color in your resume, it wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So uh, and James, I know you have some big questions about calling recruiters before and asking questions. I don't think we have time to cover it, um, guys. Also. Uh, I think it's been great. I think it's been a lot of information and we had a really, really um, various and uh, like a really different resumes with different positions and stuff. I think I feel like it's been uh, really informative. So if you obviously like that video, make sure to uh, to like it, <laughs> make sure to click, click that button and like it and subscribe to the channel. And I think if it, you like that format, uh, I'm more than happy to organize another session like this. Uh, we can do one with Ben later, or I also have a few few other people, um, resume writers. We can, you know, do some uh, panel discussion and that. So if you're keen to do more of those, 
Um, happy to do it. Uh, please message me on LinkedIn or on Meetup, YouTube, wherever. Like LinkedIn, probably the easiest way. If you if you want to send a resume for those sort of formats, I'm happy to organize similar sessions like that. And I think it's quite useful for everyone to actually watch someone else's resume as getting reviewed because you can also uh, gather some feedback for yourself. So if you like the format, as I said, I'm happy to keep it going. And maybe every six weeks we can do similar sessions. So please, if you do want to do something like that, message me and uh, I'll keep organizing something similar. In the meantime, next week, we're going to um, talk about tech layoffs, burning topic, of course. Uh, tech layoffs, um, 10 of April next Wednesday, and the impact on organizational structure and roles. So quite should be quite an interesting discussion uh, with Evgeny, Peter, and Todd, and we'll talk about different reasons, you know, why, you know, we think that tech layoffs happened last year and actually what it means for your career. And maybe you need to change those uh, job titles in your resumes just to just to adapt what what's happening um what's happening out there um so thank you guys saying um thank you um james saying yes please bring more of those sessions um thank you guys yes so again bring it on send me resumes and head to uh, Ben's website if you want to um, book more feedback from him, cvwriters.com.au. Um, thank you again, everyone. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Jana. It was fun. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Um, see you soon.